I love this question. This is a real kind of wedge question, one of those ones that separates the people who know how to take SATs and treat it like the puzzle that it is, and the robots, the ones who just keep going along, doing the same old math they've always done, unable to adjust to the new kinds of questions that the SAT is going to ask them. So if you did algebra here, fine, you can do it. It's probably more time consuming than it's worth. Maybe I'll show it at the end. But the smart move is to recognize that the SAT really does set us up sometimes for success. What do they want from us? Do they want X, like every other question you've ever done in school? No. They want X plus one. That's different. That's a different phrase, different expression. Now, why is that important? Well, it's no coincidence that in the equation I'm given, yes, I see X, but more importantly, I see X plus one. That's a, that's a gift, a gift, because I don't need to solve for X. I need to solve for X plus one. More important, I don't need to solve at all because I don't, I don't need, really care what X is. I care what X plus one is and it can't be any number I can imagine. It can only be four different numbers. One minus radical two, radical two, two and four, right? This is a great example where guess and check can make your life really easy, really fast. So what do we do? We just substitute these numbers in for the term x plus one, right? These are not x's, these are x plus ones. So let's start with the easiest thing, right? Let's, let's start at the bottom, four, right? So if I did D, if I wanted to test out choice D, what would I do? I would put four in for x plus one, right? Let's make sure we understand that is substituting for that. And if we can do that, this is really simple. Four is equal to two over four. Well, is it? No, because two over four is equal to a half. So four is not equal to a half. Gone. Next, I do C. Again, I'm lazy. I'm gonna do the, the choices that make the most sense to me. And so this one is the next best. So in this case, again, I'm plugging in, I'm guessing and checking, but I'm, I'm not substituting in for X, I'm substituting in for X plus one because that's what the answer choices mean. So two is equal to two over two. Well, two over two simplifies to one. So no, that's not true either. Two is not equal to one, those are different numbers. Now you're like, oh no, I'm gonna have to do this weird thing. Well, again, be lazy. What's the easier of the two here that you, you can do? Well, I, I can do B first because radical two is a little bit easier of a number, right? Radical two equals two over radical two. Well, two things we can do here. One is just how do we manipulate this? Well, we can kind of treat it like a double fraction and cross multiply, right? So we cross diagonally and so radical two times radical two is two, right? That's what a radical does. Is Let's just multiply the two things together. So two equals two, check. So that's right. If you're unsure in your math, this is the calculator section. Grab your calculator, what can we do? We can do radical two in our calculator and it's gonna be radical two is equal to 1.414. And then we do two divided by radical two in our calculator and we get the exact same number, 1.414 thus proving that that choice is correct, right? We want the numbers to be the same. They're supposed to be equal. So there you go. To me, that's the best way to do it because it doesn't require me to have to deal with any weird algebra, multiple variables on multiple sides of an equation. I'm just testing. I'm testing in the laziest way possible and it turns out that I can still get the answer even though the answer itself is not that uh, understandable it's still provable. And that's the key, is we're proving choices. Now, if you wanna do the algebra, if you really insist, fine, I don't wanna do it, but I'll do it for you. X plus one is equal to two over X plus one. Okay. Well, I would do the same thing I just did with the radical twos. I would pretend that this is a fraction. I would cross multiply. 
Another way to think about it actually is if I wanted to get rid of fractions, I use multiplication to do that. So I would multiply both sides by x plus 1 because a term on the top and a term on the bottom cancel out. But if I do that, that means I've got two x plus 1s that I need to multiply together. Most of you are going to FOIL that out. And there's a shortcut here, and what you should do is uh, keep it as x plus 1 squared is equal to 2, so that way you can take the square root of both sides, cross out the squared, and be left with x plus 1 equals radical 2, which is what we just got. But you're probably not going to do that, because if you didn't see the shortcut from the get-go, you're probably stuck doing it the long way, which means you're FOILing. So you're getting x squared plus uh, x plus x plus 1 is equal to 2. You're combining like terms, you're subtracting 2 hopefully from both sides, and you're getting x squared plus 2x minus 1 is equal to 0. And that's going to let you factor. Um, no, it's not. I didn't even see this coming. So that's not going to let you factor, and the problem is it doesn't have nice factors, right? What multiplies to negative 1 and adds to 2? Nothing. So now you're stuck going down the rabbit hole of quadratic formula. x is equal to negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. x is equal to negative b, so that's negative 2 plus or minus the square root of 2 squared minus 4 times 1 times negative 1 all over 2 times 1. So that's x is equal to negative 2 plus or minus the square root of 4 plus 4 over 2. Can't reduce that. Most people are going to reduce that. Can't do it. We got to do this first. And x is equal to negative 2 plus or minus. We got to convert radical 8. That's going to be 2 radical 2 over 2. Now we can reduce a 2 into all the parts. That leaves us with x is equal to negative 1 plus or minus the square root of 2. So, that's a value, but remember, they didn't want x. I already lost all my work. They wanted x plus 1. So now I've got to take both of these. This is really two values, right? This is uh, negative 1 plus radical 2 and negative 1 minus radical 2. And I've got to add 1 to both because if I want to get x plus 1, I've got to do negative 1 plus radical 2 plus 1 which cancels out the negative 1 with the positive 1 and gets me x plus 1 is equal to radical 2 and it's of no consequence but x plus 1 would be also equal to negative 1 minus radical 2 plus 1 which still cancels out those which leaves me with negative radical 2 as well. So yeah, same answer. But hopefully you stopped listening to me a long time ago because this is so stupid of a way to do this. And that's your algebra brain. If you did it this way, you, uh, you got to rein that in. This is not an algebra test. This is a problem solving test. And you picked the long, arduous, difficult path for no reason. No reason. Use the question to guide you. What do they want? What do they give you? Yes, sometimes we got to solve forward and do the algebra. But most of the time, if there's a way to solve backwards, testing answers, that's safer and that's faster. And that's what I did here. And it's a little weird, but it's much easier than doing quadratic formula with some awful, awful, awful equation. Hopefully, that long explanation of the algebra made my point for me. Stick to the strategies when you can. Avoid algebra when you can. Guess and check saved us here a lot.